Good morning and welcome to Live at 10 this morning on the theme Walking Through Sweet Corn. Just a couple of uh, short notices as we begin. First of all, just to say we have our Holy Communion services. It's All Saints at 12 p.m. on a Sunday and at 5 p.m. on Sunday at St. James. And both of those services need to be booked through the parish office. And we also have a 6 p.m. Holy Communion service at All Saints on a Wednesday. And with our recent experience, we've decided we could do away with the booking requirement for that. So please do just show up for the 6 p.m. service. It will be a first come, first serve basis. And then just to say there is post live at 10 zoom for coffee as it were so that i'd send some details out by email if you haven't got those and would like them pop a comment in the box and i will try and message you through the details for that just for a quick gathering a catch up after our live at 10 service this morning just to say next sunday on live at 10 we will celebrate harvest and through this week uh, we'll put a box in the porch at St James and under the porch at All Saints Church Hall for your food bank donations. We'll give our donations to Horndean Food Bank. Um, be good to have lots of non-perishable goods to give to those who have such need. And so um, we'll be doing that next week. And so we come together and as ever on live at 10 if it helps you in your worship please do join in the words in yellow or, or any of them you're at home but as you see fit so we gather in the presence of God who knows our needs hears our cries feels our pain and heals our wounds be with us Spirit of God Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. And now our particular prayer for today, our collect. Gracious God, you call us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now an opportunity for us just to reflect for a moment, to think of where perhaps we weren't at the fullness of what God would have for us this week past and just to come and say sorry. The Son of Righteousness has dawned with healing in his wings. Let us come to the light of Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We are often slow to follow the example of Christ Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We often fail to walk the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now we receive the magnificent forgiveness won for us by our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. And in light of that forgiveness, we come to a moment of sharing peace. Though we are separate, we could still share in our hearts peace with each other. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So, our little reflection 
for this morning. Walking through sweet corn, why is that the theme of this service? Well, last year, uh, the family and I were out um, for a walk and we were following a guidebook of walks. We were in Devon and we are following a guidebook of walks there. And it said, follow the edge of this field and then 100 yards in, turn left at the signpost for the footpath and cross the large field next door. And we arrived at that point expecting, as you often see, to find a path running through whatever crops were in that field. Instead, we were faced with a wall of sweet corn. There was no path in that field. There was a signpost pointing through it, but there was no sign of the path. Now you may think, oh, well, you could go around the outside of it, but we were walking, A, in an area we didn't know, and B, actually the sweet corn went to the edges of the field, and the field we were in was full of crops as well. And so we as a family, the four of us there, are going, what do we do? And so I got my little compass out, tried to take the best bearing I could, and we set off into this field of sweet corn, which was taller than I am, taller than, much taller than Diana, um, <laughs> taller than the boys, and we just went the best we could. Where we'd expected to find a path, we actually had quite a tense experience, making our way between rows of sweet corn plants, unable to see where we were going, and actually there was a huge sense of relief when we did get to the other side of the field, find we weren't too far off and actually managed to regain the path that we expected to be on and continue our walk. Not finding that path was a tense experience or finding the path blocked as we did and having to do what we did was difficult. And I just wonder if there's a metaphor there, a parable for our lives this tense experience that perhaps is even more true when we're in the familiar surroundings of our lives and suddenly we find that the path we expected to be on isn't there, it's blocked, it's changed, it's gone. Perhaps it's a good metaphor for just changes in life and not just now but all the time. Like I say, when the familiar or the expected suddenly isn't where it should be as far as we know. And how about you? Does that chime with you? Is this a real experience for you? To be really or metaphorically lost? And to be lost in a place you don't know is very difficult. To be lost in circumstances that are unfamiliar is hard. Times of seeing the familiar fall away, and perhaps that's definitely a reality now. And the expected surroundings replaced by something strange perhaps to find that the path we're following no longer exists, faced with a blank wall, an obstruction. Changes, losses, the sudden disappearance of that expected path, may it work, family, whatever, create tension and create stress. And these tensions, these stresses are reflected in the ongoing tension of our faith as Christians. We live in the reality of the now that Jesus has lived among us, has died and has risen from the dead and ascended into heaven. We live in the reality of the it is finished, a victory from the cross, victory over death and the inauguration of renewed and redeemed creation. But we also live in a time of not yet, that everything isn't yet perfect. We haven't reached the full truth in words of Revelation 21. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. We aren't yet in the time of no more tears, no more mourning. So what does God say about all of this? Well, when our well-drawn paths and plans are compromised by the pain and change of the world, where do we turn? And I would like to offer just a few short verses from the Bible here. So let's start in Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. 
These are words of King David who loved. I mean, Psalm 119 is a love song to the statutes, the precepts, the word of God as David had it. And remember, he didn't have the full richness of even the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. He had the law handed down to Moses. And that was enough. That was his guide. That was his um, path. Even in confusion, even in loss, that was what led him on. And yet we have the whole word of God in the Bible. So perhaps there is one of the certainties, one of the things we can follow, the inspired word of God handed down to use, to be guided by. I'd like to offer another couple of verses that kind of go together. So first of all, from Psalm 48, For this God is our God for ever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. And then from the Gospels, John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is to come. So what does this offer us? It offers us God as our guide. And Jesus' words in the Gospels speak of the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit who will guide. So here we have the two foundations that are reliable, a guide even when the rest of things fall apart, when our human plans, when our human expectations are disappointed, are taken away from us. There are two foundations in our faith that we can stand on, word and spirit, word and spirit. So not one or the other, but both and. There are certainties there are constancies there for us in change in loss in everything where our path seems to have suddenly disappeared and then there are words from a prayer of Zechariah that are said in Church of England morning prayer the Benedictus it's called and it's about John the Baptist but there's some words at the end to focus on so these words and you my child that's John the Baptist will be called the prophet of the most high for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Those words, because of the tender mercy of our God, which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Words of promise of guidance. This rising sun was and is Jesus who guides us into the path of peace. No matter where else our life course takes us. And this isn't just any old peace. This isn't just a bit of peace and quiet. This isn't just, you know... Um, that, that moment of stillness, but this is the shalom, the wholeness, the fullness of a life of peace that God offers, the peace beyond understanding that Jesus promised. Let's not have rose-tinted spectacles here about this peace. It's not happy-go-lucky, denying reality. Pete Hughes speaks well of the tension that exists here. And talks of the tension that we live in, that now and not yet. So if the church is called to live in this tension, how do we do that well? The answer is that we start by acknowledging that the tension hurts. That's real, the tension hurts. We shouldn't seek to eliminate the tension with bad theology, but instead embrace the fact that good theology sometimes hurts. And then we remember the hope that has been set before us. We are shaped by the ends that we live for. We fix our eyes on Jesus, the author of the story and the one who will bring it to completion. This completion of all things being made new means that no situation is now beyond redemption or beyond Christ's reach. All will be healed, all will be put right, which creates incredible hope even in the midst of pain. Peace in the midst of tension, mess, pain, as the realities of those things are lived out. And as we do that, perhaps we will then, or as we do that, we will then start to inhabit that calling of Jesus 
from the Sermon on the Mount in the words of Matthew's Gospel. You, that's us, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And what is that light that we shine? The light of gospel, of good news, of the reliable, trustworthy and faithful path. Spoken of in John's gospel, in the words of Jesus, that faithful path, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That good news that there is a path and it is Jesus. How might we respond to that? Well, just a little bit more from Pete Hughes. We spoke about that posture of pain and hope in the tension of the now and the not yet. So in this posture of pain and hope, we pray. And more specifically, we pray the kingdom prayer that Jesus taught us, that his kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. That is our response. We take a stand against the tide of brokenness that we see around us and pray for God's will to be done. And then we align our lives with our prayers, seeking to be obedient to the way of Jesus. So yes, the answer to the question, what is the response, is pray. And pray those words of your will be done. But also, there's something in those words of Jesus about God good works about things we do as we live out our faith and so I'll just say one practical way to respond will be in our response for our harvest service next week the fact we will be gathering gifts of non-perishable food for those that need it and to be generous in that to be seen for our open-heartedness would be one way of starting to respond to the tensions the pains and hurts of this time of now and not yet. Amen. And so now we'll listen to a song from Resound Worship, which is based around words from Psalm 46, Be Still My Soul.
all your striving, find his peace. Become a shining light of grace. And show that God still loves the world. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. So we come to a time of speaking with God in our prayers. And the invitation is there, as it has been uh, a couple of times, for you to put topics for prayer on the comments. I will try and find them all in the various Facebook feeds, but we'll include them at the end. If there are things you would like us to pray together about this morning, if it's for someone else that you have permission to put that on or it's anonymous um, please but let's just share words of prayer make your ways known upon earth Lord God your saving power among all peoples renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy Guide the leaders of this and every nation that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace and let your glory be over all the earth. Now, I look to the feeds. And from Liz, we're praying for all who are searching for work at these times. Lord, where the path of employment has been cut off, Lord, we pray for all of those who are seeking a new path. Lord, that the trauma of the event of losing the job will not rest on them, but that they will have your peace and that they will be guided by you into the next season. We pray for all of those, again from Liz, battling cancer. Yes, Lord. We pray for your healing. We pray, Holy Spirit, your touch on those we know and those we don't who are in a battle with cancer at this time. Lord, guide the hands of surgeons and all medical professions as they seek to do their bit in that healing. But Lord, healing is in your hands. And you can do immeasurably more than we can possibly imagine. So Lord, we just pray your Holy Spirit will be there intervening and working alongside those who work for the health of their patients. From Sue Williams, Heavenly Father, when we lose our way, please light the path ahead. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so I don't see any other prayers on the feeds at the moment. If any do come later, they'll be included in prayers later in the day. And so we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And then we draw our prayers together in the words Jesus taught us. We pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And now an opportunity just to share words of faith. To affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now another song. This one is words of commitment. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Um, it's to a new tune with a chorus added to it. But uh, let's just inhabit these words and perhaps have them as prophetic words over our lives to be consecrated to our Lord.
take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee and so we come to the end of our time together in this online service this morning sharing words of closing and blessing eternal God our beginning and our end accompany us in this day's journey dawn on our darkness open our eyes to praise you for your creation and to see the work you set before us today take us and use us to bring others to the new life you give in Jesus Christ our Lord say words together of pilgrimage God of our pilgrimage you have led us to the living water refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord Amen the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us and those we love now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we couldn't possibly have a service about guidance, about direction, about paths without having the words of guide me, O thou great redeemer. See you next week at Live at 10 for Harvest. Amen. Yeah.